Hello and welcome back to the Cambrian Virtual Show, uh, the show that we're going to be delivering from the 22nd to the 29th of May. Over this period, uh, we're on average giving three speakers a day. Uh, today is Thursday, <laughs> uh, so we're coming towards the end of the show, uh, if you're re-watching this. Um, you can see all of our previous, uh, uh, previous videos that we've done live uh, on, our face, uh, on our Facebook and YouTube, but you can get to them through our uh, website, which is cambrianphoto.co.uk. Um, there's also a link in the description that you can follow as well. Uh, not only can you see the previous videos, but uh, there is also an area where you can see all the lives coming up as well. So make sure you uh, click on uh, the relatively uh, relative uh, social media page that you want to watch on, uh, click the reminder so you don't miss out on the talks coming up as well. Uh, yes, we've had a wonderful day today so far. Uh, let us know that you're watching live. Uh, please, place your, uh, please place your comments, say hi, uh, we love a hello. Um, and uh, yes, brilliant time to, oh yeah, some nice highs coming through there. Um, and I'd love to introduce uh, our speaker, for uh, this evening, uh, Damien. So, hello, Damien. How are you? Hello, mate. How are you? How are you all? Um, yes, uh, getting some comments through. Can you see those comments coming on on the side, Damien? Okay, as well. Let me just. Let me just. Oh, I can now. Yes, I can. Yeah, there we go. So we've got uh, some nice highs coming through on there. So, Damien, you've 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 joined us this evening, but not only that, you've gone above and beyond. And rather than just giving us a, 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 a sort of quick demo on live, you, you've gone away and you've, you've made a video for us in your studio, haven't you? I have, yeah. <laughs> it's the first time we've actually been in the studio for the last two months. And I thought, well, you can't really demonstrate speed lights and on-camera lighting without going and doing it. So yeah. we went down to the studio with, with an iPhone and a wing and a prayer and uh, hopefully we've put 20 or 30 minutes together um for you that will help explain things there's a boring bit where i'm talking at the front and then there's the actual practical but the, the idea is we, we do this as a, a full day's workshop so we try yeah. to condense it as best as we can to make it practical so that um obviously the the, the cambrian massive um <laughs> the benefit of it that's the idea oh that's 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 brilliant and uh yeah thank you for uh, for, for doing this for us as well so it's it's lovely that you uh, lovely that you did that i i think um rather than keeping people waiting i think we should just jump straight into this uh video that you've made uh sorry before we do i'm getting a bit ahead of myself here damien um we um Obviously, any questions that you've got, uh, please put them in the comments uh, because uh, Damien's going to be joining us uh, at the at, at the end of this uh, video that he's made for us as well. And so, any questions that you have during this video or anything that you want to know about uh, Speedlight flash guns, just drop them in the comments, and we'll get to them at uh, the end of this live session. Um, so, yeah, let's 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 do this. <laughs> I'll be back later then. Yeah. Good evening and thank you for inviting me to speak at the Cambrian Photography Virtual Show. Um, firstly, I hope we're all well, safe and healthy. We are living through unprecedented times and I've been asked here to come and chat about speedlights and to try and demystify the thing that is often the very first purchase we make after the camera and a lens when we get into photography. And then nine times out of 10, it languishes at the bottom of your camera bag doing nothing and that's no good so thank you for inviting me i'm happy to be here and i'm happy to share so this is what we're talking about the humble speed light i'm hopefully going to demystify some of the functions of it and then we'll have some practical fun with it and i'll show you how you can take a picture that's almost indistinguishable from a studio lit picture with just one of these on the camera. Um, speed lights are 
wonderful little bits of equipment. Think of them as pocketable, portable sunshine. Um, this is um, going to be quite a generic chat, simply because um, Joel's told me I need to keep within me time. So I've got a little script here of things to go through, so I'll make sure that we talk about all the right things so you get the right information. Let's talk about power first and how much power do you need. One of the best guides to um, buying uh, a speed light comes in its actual name. So, for example, this is a Modus uh, 600RT. Um, and basically, it's got 60 watts of power. It's, um, its wattage is often within its number. And what I mean by that is this is a, a an older Olympus um, FL50R, uh, and that's got 50 watts of power. Obviously, like anything, the more power you've got, the better it is. But power um, is in relation to size of unit. You can go all the way up to something like this, which will give you 200 watts of power. And that studio lighting um, sort of uh, usability and power. But we want to talk about something that's easy to transport and easy to use. Most Good speed lights have articulation um, in the head. They're able to move up and they're able to rotate. And that's very important, as you'll see later when we actually get into shooting with them. Um, many speed lights these days have a zoom function. And what that means is the bulb moves up and down within the head and it enables the light pattern to be uh, narrowed or widened. So that way it matches with the angle of lens that you've got on the camera. Lots of people talk about dedicated flash. Well, what does that mean? That basically means that the flash is made to work in sync with all the features that your camera might have. So for argument's sake, these are Olympus dedicated. This is Fuji dedicated. Um, and this is dedicated to its own brand. Now, that way, you've got a choice. You can save some pennies and buy non-dedicated speed lights, or you can buy dedicated speed lights and open up a little bit more functionality. And then when you get to opening up the functionality, you can decide, do I buy the own make, or do I buy um, something that's made by a third party but in lots of opinions are maybe equally as good, if not better. One of the other choices that you have is what powers your speed light. Most speed lights are powered by good old AA batteries. Now, these have advantages in the fact that you can pretty much get them anywhere all over the world, and disadvantages in the fact that the way that they power the capacitors means that they're slightly slower to respond. So you might have to wait a little bit longer, only seconds between shots, where the newer breed of speed light are lithium iron powered, very much like the battery in your camera itself. And that gives us the ability to have more power delivered quicker. Simple as that. So the refresh rate is faster. Now, these are all things that you have to decide when you're getting your speed light if you haven't already got one, or if you do have one, how you're best going to use it. Lots of speed lights these days come with different modes manual mode, TTL mode, program mode. Now, these vary widely depending on manufacturer and what the manufacturer's um, specs and tolerances are. And as I said, this is a cut down um, webinar for you guys, which would normally be a whole day's workshop at the studio or indeed at the Cambrian studio. So I want to give you an overview. I want to inspire you. I want you to understand that these things are there to be used and they're there to be controlled and they're there to make your photography better. TTL, what does that mean? 
TTL stands for through the lens, and it means that the flash emits a beam of light. The light hits the subject, bounces back, goes right inside through the lens, and it's metered exactly where your camera would meter ambient daylight. Now, that sounds like the perfect thing, but there are drawbacks with that, as we'll see later. Program invariably means that there's something on the, the flash itself that's metering the output of light. It does the same sort of thing as TTL, but instead of the camera measuring the light, the flash unit measures the light. And they're often called program or auto functions. And then there's true manual. And the good old Olympus FL50R is probably the easiest one to demonstrate what manual means. Because on the back is a rotation dial. And it's literally turn the power up, turn the power down and the fractions that you see with speed lights often confuse people simply because the fractions they confuse everybody but it's very simple when you understand it one to one just means the flash is running at its total output power it cannot give you any more and therefore it goes down in fractions so you get down to half power, which means it's using half of its power, uh, quarter power, eighth, sixteenth, and so on and so forth. Now, you might think this is strange, but it's quite rare for me to use a speed light at full power. It's much more important for me to be able to control kisses of light. So when you get speed lights that go down to one 128th of its total output, or even one 256th of its total output it gives you far more control again something else to look out for is speed lights work in different ways the older they are they tend to work in full stops the more modern they are they can work in thirds or even tenths of stops if you want that ultimate little bit of control for your creativity so we've covered power, we've covered the zoom head, we've covered rotation and articulation of the head, we've talked about dedicated and uh, manual speed lights. Now they tend to be the very, very cheapest and they literally just go flash and you turn them up and down in power manually and very often you can't even meter them with the camera like the TTL you have to have a separate meter. But that isn't in the remit of what we're talking about today. So hopefully that will give you a really good um, brief first encounter overview of the functionality of a speed light. Right, as a little tease, you get to the point where you have bits like this. These are uh, dedicated triggers. So you can use more than one of these and not have to connect them to the camera. As I say, this is a brief um, overview of a full day's workshop, maybe to whet your appetite, maybe to get you excited about speed lights and doing something positive with them because they are very much misunderstood and underloved. So let's not worry too much about off-camera triggers because, um, as I say, we're not covering that today. What we really want to see is what happens if you get this out of your bag, pop it on your camera, what can you actually create just with on-camera flash? Right, so as if by magic, I'm now in the camera room. And what I thought I'd do is I'd use uh, one of my favourite cameras of all time, the Pen F. Uh, with the Modus 600 RT. Now, this RT is dedicated to the Micro Four Thirds system, so all the bells and whistles will work. Uh, the reason I've decided to use this is so I can have a little bit of bragging rights. And if I ask Leslie nicely, she'll pop a picture in a moment, because when uh, Hanel first brought the Modus out, we were commissioned to shoot the advertising pieces and some of the video for it. So if I can now get Leslie to replace me, with an image that we've called the Bride Collector. 
I can tell you that this was shot with eight speed lights and a mixture of modus and third party speed lights. Because as I was showing you before with those um, off camera flash connectors, you can make any speed light work with a modus system. I think that's unique to modus and therefore quite clever. Okay, so I want to show you the worst thing, if you like, about speed lights. And the worst thing is the size of the bulb. It's teeny tiny, it's small. If you compare it to most studio flash, you'll see how much smaller it is. So in real terms, what does that mean? It means that the smaller light source is more contrasty. It's not as attractive, it's not as a fl flattering straight out of the unit. But we don't need anything clever or anything magical to make the light really good. We just need a sound understanding of how this works. One of the things, if you read the camera magazines, that they'll tell you to do is to bounce the light off the ceiling. So instead of the flash pointing at the subject, they'll say, bounce it to the ceiling. Now, to some extent, that's not a bad idea because direct flash at the subject, A, isn't very comfortable, and B, unless you've got amazing cheekbones, isn't very flattering. So the reason I'm not going to de deliberately point my uh, my flash in my camera at my pandemic standing model is because she's got a little nose, lovely eyes, perfect cheekbones, so she'd look great. You'll see how good she looks when I show you flash exposure compensation. But I want this to be real world and I want it to be um, beneficial to you all. So why am I anti pointing it straight to the ceiling? Well, let me ask all you landscape photographers out there. What's the worst time of day to take a landscape picture? Midday. Why? Because the sun is directly overhead. And what the information in the magazines and things that people don't work with these on a daily basis are telling you in bouncing it off the ceiling is making poor light quality. You tend to get um, dark eye sockets, panda eyes, as people often refer to it. So it's not the answer. What I will do is I'll take a quick snap now and I'll show you the back of the camera and we'll show you um, the finished picture um, to show you what bouncing the, the light from the ceiling looks like. And remember, my studio has been designed to allow light to bounce where I put it. So the white floor, the white walls, it is going to fill uh, some of the shadow in a little bit and therefore the pitch is going to look a little less softer than it perhaps would if we were shooting in normal situations. So I'm just setting the camera and the flash together onto TTL. So it should work in harmony. I'll explain why in a minute. It doesn't always do that. But let's just take a quick snap. And you will be able to see when we pop the image up that there's um, light over the top. The, the, the forehead is slightly dark. And you can see the direction in the light. It's not very flattering. So small light source, contrasty light, what's the solution? The solution is to bounce it, but not from directly up. When I'm out and about and I'm on location, one of the things I'm always looking for if I have to do this is where the ceiling meets a wall. And I want to bounce the light into that crease, if you like. And then what happens is the small light hits that um, join <clears throat> and is reflected back and as it does it grows and grows and grows and the bigger it is the softer it becomes so let me take a shot and show you what i mean by that and you'll be able to see hopefully see what we were talking about the articulation in the head able to move it round so it can bounce behind me and if i do it this way i'm not going to blind myself either Now that will give me a much softer, smoother um, transition from shadow to highlight. It's more flattering. 
shows less pimples, shows less cre creases. Bouncing is a good thing. So you should see now just how big that light source has become. The small light source hits the wall and the ceiling, expands, bounces back, softens itself. And as you've seen, it makes the picture a little more pleasing. Right, now here's the only boring techie thing I'm going to give you, a physics thing. And it's the angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection. So like a snooker ball hitting the cushion of a table, where light hits, the angle that it hits the surface is the angle that it bounces back off. Now that gives us some amazing control in being able to make pictures with on-camera flash that look nearly as good as studio lighting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna point my flash at my wall to the side and I'm gonna angle it so the angle that it goes in on is a reflectance of the angle that it comes out at. And I should start to be able to get a short loop or even a Rembrandt, if I'm lucky, lighting pattern on my model's face. So let's just have a look there and see what I'm able to achieve with the bounce. Well, <laughs> My grandma always said ugly buggers for luck. So it would just have it that the first shot is a beautiful Rembrandt pattern. And I'll show you that again by inserting the picture now. Thing is, though, it's still a little bit wishy-washy. There's not enough control for me. And the reason that that is is speed light, any speed light is quite inefficient. So if I turn this way and place my finger, a finger's width away from the, the top of the speed light, you should see if I make it flash, you should see my finger light up. If I move it another finger's breadth, still lighting up. Another finger's breadth, still lighting up. Another finger's breadth, just stopping lighting. So this is actually set. Can you see on the back of the camera, on the back of the unit, it's zoomed to a hundred millimeter. Oops. It's zoomed to a hundred millimeter lens um, comparison of how it's throwing the light out. That's what it's trying to produce. So you can see that it's very inefficient. So how do I take more control out of this? It's dead simple. It could as easily be an elastic band or a hair bobble and a piece of cardboard. I'm lucky enough to have in the studio um, part of the Portaflex kit that I designed years ago. So I'm now going to fit that to this and show you the difference that that makes. Oh, we must love you lot because it is warm, warm, warm in the studio. So what am I waffling on about more control? It's very simple. It's a rubberized piece of Velcro in my case, but it could just as easily be um, an elastic band. Back in the days when I was first a photographer and I was working with the local press, we used to use uh, thrown away prints from the lab because they were white on one side and an elastic band. And I, I'm lucky enough here to have um, a piece of reflective material like soft boxes are made of and then I can just wrap that around the top of my flash. Now what that does and the bit that I can't show you here but I would be able to show you if you were on a workshop doing this is when we don't control the top of the flash tube what happens is the light spreads everywhere as you've seen with my finger and in an environment like this where it's highly um, lots of white or light tones. Light bounces about like it does naturally and it fills in um, the shadow side. Now, sometimes that's not what we want to happen. We want to have that control. So the secret with a speed light is when you're bouncing it, 
the subject should not be able to see the Fresnel lens on the front of the speed light. As long as they can't see that, as long as it's blocked, then you're going to get much, much more control out of your um, speed light, the light, and therefore your shot. Look at the difference. If I do exactly the same bounce shot off my pretend wall, so I'm looking at the angles again, and I'm looking angle of incidence, angle of reflection, how it's coming in, how it's going out, and I take the picture again. There is a marked difference in contrast. And I just want to show you the back of the camera here live, just to prove that I'm not making it up. So if Leslie can get right into there, you can see live and dangerous on the back of the camera is a beautiful Rembrandt pattern with more contrast. The reason I'm shooting in black and white is because it makes it easier to show you the pictures at the end of the day. So that's a massive tip, a massive tip. Cover the Fresnel up and um, you get much more contrast, and much more control. Now, some of you might say, what happens if you're outside? So I'm hotter and sweatier and more out of breath, but you should be able to see that my magic wall has disappeared and you can see the mess in the studio that we didn't tidy up uh, for before we had to close with the pandemic. So if there isn't a wall, what do you do? There's your answer. Most photographers carry some form of reflector all of the time in the kit bag and all you need is a little reflector and a willing helper. So I'm going to ask Leslie to come from behind the camera and come this way around because it's safer. Or that way, okay, she never listens to me. I'm going to give her this and then we're going to do the same thing. So Leslie, so you could do this with a member of public. All you need, because my, my idea was always what would happen if I was out and about and, you know, Princess Diana, uh, when she was alive, obviously, uh, I found her sat crying in the garden of Tatton Park um, Hall and we needed a picture and I said, oh, come to the studio and she'd have no time, it's going to be here and now. Well, I always carry a camera, a lens, a speed light and one of these. And all I'd need to do is stop her member of public or the security guard and ask them to hold it just there for me. Now, although Leslie is obviously very skilled and an associate in her own right, anybody can do this. They just need to be able to take direction. So just up a little bit higher, please, Leslie. And I'm aiming my flash as before. And let's see how I'm doing. That's a tiny bit too small, because I'm being honest, with my Rembrandt pattern. So I'm going to ask her to step, one step to your right, Lel. Brilliant. And I'll show you the error as well. And one more. Now we've corrected it. It's looking great. Let's just do one more, Lily. Come towards your right again for me, please. Awesome source. And you'll see that the progression is just building up the size of the um, highlight on the opposite side of the subject's face to where the light's coming from. Now, what you've got to remember now, this is no longer the light source. That, just like the wall, just like the return, that's the light source. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, so I just want to talk about flash exposure compensation. And I've asked Leslie to show you the back of the camera. Now, we're doing this really quickly, guys. Um, so the quality might be brilliant. We're phone, uh, filming it on an iPhone, actually, just to test how it does it. But what I want to show you is the, ca the flash and the camera are working in TTL. So let me take an image where the camera and the flash think they're doing the right thing. So there's an image taken at F4. Now, I might decide that that's too 
light. And all I do then is come on to this little widget here, and it's different on different makes of camera, uh, how it works, but I just want to show you the principle. And if I say to myself, well, it's too bright, what I'd like to do is give myself less light. Let's go mad so you can see the difference, and I'll turn two stops of light off. So what I'm telling it to do now is I'm saying whatever you think it is, give me two stops less. Ooh, so comparatively, if I get that back on, you can see it's much darker. Now, again, if I decide that actually I need a bit more power than what the camera thinks it's going to give me, so there it is balanced at zero again, so it's what it thinks it's getting through the TTL, I'm going to go mad and give it two stops more light. Boom, and we've blown out all the features because it's too bright. Interesting though, isn't it? I said before that she'd look reasonably okay with direct flash, and that's because she's got a good face structure, so it, it does um, help. It also helps that she's about 15 foot away from the background. But that's flash exposure compensation. It's you driving the flash. So why can't you just leave it in TTL? all the time well that's really really very simple it's because ttl is looking for a mythical 18 percent gray what it's doing is it's taking whatever is in your viewfinder mincing it all up and liquidizing the picture if you like and coming up and trying to find 18 percent now when you understand that 18 percent is only midday fourth of july Washington DC and you start to see how fragile photography can be. Where does 18% come from? Well, Eastman Kodak, when we were looking at putting meters into cameras, took a thousand M prints um, at random, a thousand pictures of the average picture of the average person in the average location at the average time of day taken with the average equipment and they cut them all up into inch square and measured each inch with a densinometer and then divided that number by the thousand and the answer was 18 percent so they assumed that if you were in the average place with the average person with average equipment with average skill under average lighting conditions 18 percent and this is the key phrase would get you into the ballpark so here in my studio a light skin model with a white accessory and a white wall has the camera going mad. The camera's going, oh my gosh, it's far too light. I need to shut things down. Now, conversely, if I had a dark skin model or a black cat in a coal shed, the camera would be going, oh my word, it's far too dark. I need to lighten it up. So the creative brain in the camera making those decisions of why TTL or what TTL should be isn't actually as clever as your own artistic integrity. And that's why driving the uh, equipment is super important and why we need to get off P for professional and we need to be as creative as possible and drive and control things as much as possible. Um, TTL is great. It's a very quick way of getting your picture 75% of the time. But if you want that extra 25% when you're in a difficult situation or you want to be able to make something really creative, understand that you need to drive it. And that's where flash exposure compensation comes in. You tell the little unit, no, I want more. No, I want less. That's flash exposure compensation. Right. So there we are. We're racing through just showing you snippets, hints, tips of great things you can do with speed lights. Don't let it languish in your bag. Remember, a speed light's for life, not just for Christmas. So how can we end? How can we give you an amazing finale that shows a little bit more versatility and a little bit more creativity? Well, really what we have to do is bring Leslie back with that reflector. And I'll show you in a minute, but let me tell you what the theory of what I'm gonna do is. I want to move my blocker, if you like. I want to turn the light 
backwards and I want to stop that light going forwards. Then I'm going to attempt to take a um, butterfly lighting picture pattern, a model looking picture. Remember when we bounced it off the ceiling before it was just a bit too uh, pandarai and a little bit too heavy? Well, I want to take that modelly look picture, but I need help again. I need that reflector back. What we're going to do is push this reflect this light back into that reflector, angle the reflector as you would do if it was a beauty dish. The light source becomes bigger. It, it's directed in the right direction and we should get something that looks a little bit cooler. Now, this is gonna look funny as Leslie sort of clambers in behind me with the uh, reflector, but at the end of the day, if photography is your thing, the only thing that matters is the end result. It doesn't matter what you look like, what you're doing, it's the picture that counts. So Leslie knows that she needs to hold it at about 45 degrees above my head, as I come down to take my picture, now hopefully we'll see that this is hitting that, just a little adjustment. And once more, I'll be looking super fat here, no doubt. But that doesn't matter. What does matter is I left exposure compensation, flash exposure compensation on, which I don't want. So I'm going to turn it down, take another one. Even the best of us get it wrong. And one more. And there we have it. Again, I'm going to show you the back of the camera so you know that there's absolutely no trickery. Hopefully, Leslie can get that for us. And you can see that I've got a beautiful, very model esque looking picture. Nope, she's telling me too much light. You'll have to trust me unless we come this way and you see more of the mess in the studio. Can you see it now, Lel? Yes, you can. If I can hold my hands steady. I will obviously show you the picture as well, but I just wanted to see the shape. It's obviously a little bit lighter here than it should be, but that's because you're looking at a video screen. But there you go. Right, so I can almost feel Joel doing this, telling me I'm coming to the end of my time because he said, I've got to save 10 or 15 minutes at the end for questions and answers. Now, hopefully my timing has been good and hopefully I've done that. If we run over, I don't mind. Joel will just have to stay longer. Happy to answer any questions that you have. So there is a very brief, a thousand miles a minute look at the power, the positivity, the reason that speed lights are amazing tools. If this is what we can do with them on camera, just imagine what we can do with them off. But that's another workshop. Hopefully, um, this will have inspired you to want to use and control your own source of light even more. And I'd honestly love to see any of you at the studio when time and, and safety and health allows to come and learn hands-on for yourself and see just how powerful these tools are. Um, Leslie will probably shout at me for this, but as it's a, a Cambrian uh, virtual show day, we should have a show offer. So next time we have a speed light workshop or if we commit it all to video, then you can have 10% off. So hopefully you've enjoyed your time with me and with Leslie as much as we've enjoyed edutaining you. And I genuinely, genuinely hope that it does inspire you to get more flashy. Thank you very much. Any questions?
uh, mics. There we go. <laughs> forgot. Oh, back in the forgot room. Forgot to unmute us. Forgot to unmute us. There we go. <laughs> hold my hand up and, and hold. confess. Um, on. I noticed that I'd given Leslie a picture out of sequence in that. Now, somebody may never ever have noticed, but I did. So I'll, I'll, I'll beat her later and, <laughs> and, and get her to swap one of the, the uh, back of the camera pictures because you can't have it when it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear I me. Notice because I can't think of anything worse, Paul, than listening to myself talk. So that's the first time I've just seen it as well. Yeah, for, for for a moment there, there was there was two of you in the room. <laughs> well, that's even worse. That's even worse. I apologise deservedly, and will pay oh. for the therapy bills that you have. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, I think because you've covered it so well, um, I, I'm not well. If anyone's got any questions, please let us know. Uh, we've had one question through. Uh, please put them in the comments here, uh, and we'll. It will stay for you know if, if there's if there's questions there we'll stay and we'll answer them. Uh, we had one from uh, Kirsty here. Um, uh, I, I think you mentioned it in the video, but just to sort of go over it again, uh, right. the gizmo on top of the camera or on top of the, the flash. Basically, many years ago, I invented a little set of pocketable things called Portaflex. Now you can still get hold of them, but I know that you do similar things in the shop. So I'm yeah. not going to suggest that you come to, to us to get them, go to the shop and get them. Yeah, I mean, we we do uh, we do similar things called, uh, oh, here we go, uh, rogue, rogue flash benders uh, flash. That, are, that, are, that are very similar in, in a way. So they, they do sort of Velcro on to the, uh, to the front. Okay. And... An elastic band and a bit of white card will do the same job. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think as well, if... Uh, it's just if, if we can inspire people to go out and actually you know experiment and uh, and just play with you know a flashlight source and, and and get some amazing effects and i mean just what you said at the end of that video as well i mean these are just things that you manage to achieve with a flash on top of the camera and you know there's so much stuff you can do just by keeping it on on top of the camera there so uh, absolute uh, absolute brilliant there most people forget that it's versatile on top of the camera they forget that it's all all you need to do is make the light source bigger and come from the right direction or the direction that you want it to you know if somebody said to me damien here's a million quid design the worst place for the flash to be on your camera i'd have to turn a million quid down because it's already been done uh, <laughs> on top of what used to be the pen to prison is a ridiculous place for flash and that's why you get red eye because basically yeah. the light bounces straight in through through the iris hits the blood vessels at the back of the eye the light comes straight back out down the lens red eye um so it, it, it's a silly place to be, and that's why people immediately try and take it off camera. But they forget that you can manipulate the direction of the light and um, get a much, much better uh, quality of light still having it on camera and not yeah. having to worry about metering or you know setting groups of, of flash. But that's the idea. No, that's uh, that's brilliant. And we can see in the comments here as well, so... Uh, Obviously, uh, we've had Pauline say, uh, great overview, thanks. Uh, we've also got one from Howard here as well saying, wet my appetite for a workshop. Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, you know, we'll have to try and get uh, these these workshops uh, up and running as, as, as soon as we can. Hopefully when everything's back to normal, uh, which will be uh, which will be really drop awesome. In it. Should we drop him in it as he's not here? Who, you... who are we dropping in? Yeah, go on then. Go on, let's drop <laughs> in it. Um, he's actually got the blueprints that we sent for a four-stage speed light workshop that we could do at Cambry. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh, so we start on camera, then we go off camera, then we do some amazing things. Because one of the things that I didn't mention that's fantastic about speed lights is you know when you see some really high-end pictures, especially yeah. 
food photography were the frozen like you know caster sugar being bounced around but well, once you find a sweet spot on a speed light and it's generally somewhere below half power the flash duration is 10,000 12,000 14,000 of a second which if you know what you're doing is enough to freeze liquid it's enough to freeze movement completely so you're not having to shell out 10,000 quid on a Broncholoscoro pack to achieve yeah. that sort of arrestation of time. It can be done with a, a 30 quid speed light if you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that's it as well, isn't it? I mean, uh, we, we use the word, well, we use the terminology of, of flash uh in 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 other things as well you know uh you might say i'll be there in a, i'll be there in a flash and it, it ultimately means that it's it's you know it's it, it's boom it's like oh, it's a flash it's it's just so quick and that's what enables you to uh freeze things in time yeah absolutely absolutely i mean they they are just incredible tools really really incredible tools and the, the, the truth is, you know, photography is all about painting with light and I am absolutely down with natural light. There's nothing, you know, I, I don't sort of think it's a, like a second class citizen. The only trouble is in this country, we don't have enough decent light. So yeah. it, you have to learn how to use um, on camera flash and speed lights and, and, and studio lights if you want to make a living. Otherwise, you'd only ever be able to shoot people between 2.30 and 6.30, July the 15th. Yeah, like yeah. Good, you know? And obviously, they give you so much more power than using like things like LED or, or something like that as well. So really more flexibility. I'm, I'm not anti-LED. No. It's just that I've not found one that's powerful enough to use in every circumstance. Mm. I love the yeah. idea of being able to see the light you know, physically see where it's going. But if you look at all the, the adverts for LEDs, they tend to be shot in a location and generally a dark location. Yeah. At dusk. Well again, I, I can't I can't say to a client, I'm terribly sorry I can only shoot you at night or inside a TPO church. It just yeah. Yeah. it just doesn't work. That's brilliant. We've had one more question, and I think we'll probably end on on this one as well. So we had, uh, uh, did you set your camera to flash setting uh, when taking the shots? Uh, we we'll sort of break that down a little bit because um, probably looking into what is a flash setting. Because ultimately, as soon as you put a a flash gun on a camera, it kind of turns into its flash setting sort of anyway um yeah so there is an option that i use a lot of the time called second curtain sync yeah just alters whether the flash fires as soon as the shutter opens or before the, the shutter closes now that that has a, a, a huge difference in how the picture is seen you know if i was shooting dance or martial arts or something that i had to arrest movement i'd be on first curtain sync second curtain sync is if um i'm i'm, I'm sort of uh, blending flashlight with with daylight um the other question that that could mean is everything was the, the, the flash was set to ttl so the yeah, flash yeah. Was, i was bullying the flash with exposure compensation when i showed you other than that it was just set to ttl and i accepted what it was giving me but again, I suppose I was cheating a bit because I was keeping it as a tight head shot. So I wasn't having an expansive white background to fill the meter. Yeah, but it's that connection that you make with the camera, isn't it? And you sort of build up a rapport and you start to understand of what the camera can and can't do yeah. um, as well. I mean, I, I'm uh, totally smitten, as you lot know down there. I'm yeah. totally smitten with the GFX um, 50R. I don't, yep. don't think I've shot anything other than uh, the rally that I shot on the prototype X Pro 3. I don't think I've shot anything not on that GFX 50R in the last 12 months. That's an awesome but, camera. No. Anyway. It, it, it really is. Yeah, I was just going to squeeze in one last one here as well. So, uh, right. Eddie, Eddie, good to hear from you. Um, uh, 
I've got one of those uh, plastic speed light diffusers, but never used it. Uh, uh, what's the best use? What's the best use for it? Right. It basically gives you 180 degrees of flashlight. It's like turning a speed light into an old burr bulb flash. Now, back in the day, uh, when Mets hammerhead guns were the things that all photographers wanted, they'd buy a Fuzzard <laughs> 283, which was a lot of tiny speed light, and they'd have the the way we understand the front of the speed light looking today, they'd have it changed for a burr bulb because a burr bulb flash photography is stunning. It's like um, wedding photography when they stand a bride near a ginormous window. It's both soft and, and full of direction. And, and that's, a, that's a workshop in itself, burr bulb flash, but that's what it's for. It's for giving you a more omnidirectional spread of light. It will give you 180 degrees roughly, so it's a smoother spread of light. Yeah, they also work quite well if you use an extremely wide angle as well, those uh, yeah. those things as well. On so pop screen light in a modified, it helps fill the umbrella or helps fill the soft Yeah, Because it's, yeah. just, it's just a big spread of light. No, that's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, end on a question that's probably a little bit more for uh, me. Uh, Mr. Half of it, can I watch it later? Uh, short answer, yes, you can. You can go onto our website, which is cambrianphoto.co.uk, and you can click on uh, uh, Damien's profile on our website and uh, re-watch the video uh, on there. So that's brilliant. Uh, ending just on some more nice comments there. Excellent talk, Damien. Uh, thank, uh, looking forward to seeing you after lockdown. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Really enjoyed enjoyed it so uh brilliant david thank you ever so much you've you've gone above and beyond for us not only coming here to answer all our lovely questions and uh and whatnot but also generating that uh that that video for us uh, into what looked like a very a very warm room <laughs> it hadn't been open for two months it was hot um thanks for asking us always a pleasure um, what I will do though is I'll, I'll go back and just for my own sanity, I'll change that one picture or I'll ask Leslie to because I know nothing about putting a video together. I'll change that one picture that wasn't in the right place because um, it'll drive me in the <laughs> D crackers. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Right. Uh, from from everyone here as well, I'll just put you back in the, the green room for a little bit and I'll speak to you after the live. But thank you very much for joining us this evening. That's brilliant. Oh, always, always a pleasure to see Damien. Uh, and uh, it just just seeing him work is uh, it, it just gets me smiling. It really, really does. Uh, he's got such an enthusiastic way of, of, of showing how he works. Uh, it's really nice to see. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching live. It's always appreciated. There's been absolutely loads of you watching live uh, uh, this evening. So it's really, really nice to see that. Um, if you're watching the video uh, after the fact, so you're re-watching it, um, if you can please uh, make sure that you can still comment, uh, you can still ask us questions, uh, we can get to them as, as quick as we can. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure that you like our Facebook page. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Um, that's it for today. Tomorrow is uh, the very last day of the virtual show. Uh, very exciting. Uh, it's been a been a long journey, but we've loved every moment. So tomorrow we have a print presentation from Canon themselves. Uh, we have uh, Nikon coming in and explaining uh, about the D6, their flagship model. Uh, and ending our show uh, is a live exclusive from Clive Booth. Very much looking forward to seeing that. Until tomorrow, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.